Hi, I'm Greg Gutfeld. Here's what's coming up. Terror in France again. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton agree we're at war. So what's our next move? Plus, as Cleveland preps for massive crowds, precious snowflakes jeer and smear our nation's finest. And later, Trump edges past Clinton for the first time, but can he hold the lead till November? Thanks for joining us tonight. Let's do this, America. It's been a rough couple of days, but let's welcome tonight's guest, former U.S. Navy SEAL and the killer of some dude named Bin Laden, Fox News contributor Rob O'Neill. She didn't kill Bin Laden, but she kills my heart. It's Joanne Nosichinsky. Jonathan Honey, capitalist, big hedge fund co-founder and Fox News contributor. Yay. There you go. Come on. National Review reporter Catherine Tim and actor, writer, and comedian Jamie LaSalle. The Francis government is declaring three days of national mourning after Thursday night's attack in Nice that left scores of people dead. A terrorist driving a large truck plowed through a crowd of people gathered for Bastille Day fireworks. The ghoul behind the wheel was killed by police. The interior minister there says France is, quote, in a war with terrorists who want to strike us at any price. The attack uh, devastating a country still feeling the effects from last November's attacks in Paris that killed 130. This latest atrocity marks at least the 10th terror attack since January 2015. Over 200 killed in under 18 months. So Rob, I want to go to you first because you're the person that we depend on to kill the people that are behind this. Um, is, is it, what do you do? Well, you, I mean, I've been saying for years now, we need to get into Raqqa, Syria, American-led uh, forces, boots on the ground, uh, take out their capital. You need to do it because that's where this inspiration is coming from. Right now in the West, we'll have a few days of mourning, we'll have some candlelight visuals, but that doesn't kill the terrorists. They're, even if they say this guy, was he ISIS? We don't know if he's ISIS. He was inspired by ISIS because they put it clearly out there. Al-Qaeda does too. Yeah. You know, bludgeon them with rocks, slaughter them with knives, run them down with cars. I mean, that's right. what they're going to do. They're going to kill us regardless. I mean, the only reasonable way for some of the, you know, the leftists to get out of this is ban trucks. Yeah, exactly. Or, or, or ponder <laughs> the availability just, of trucks. Just truck. no trucks for people on the no-fly list. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the no truck no list. No flying trucks. No, it's interesting, though, that you bring up um, candlelight vigils and and thoughts and prayers, which is what you always hear about after this. And then it all moves on. And I keep thinking that perhaps the symbolic sorrow that one sees on Twitter and elsewhere is replacing authentic action, even from our leaders. The other saying, we, okay, we, we stand in solidarity with, the, solidarity with the French people. Yeah. Last time I checked, you can't kill a terrorist with hashtags. Right. It doesn't matter. That stuff doesn't matter. We need to, we need to get real about this. Look at all the, the uh, general officers that have left the military because they're so frustrated with what we're not doing about anything. We know where it is. We know what the problem is. We know the ideology. We know who's responsible. Right. You mentioned a ghoul behind the wheel. There's also a ghoul in them. Rock of Syria. We cut the head off of that, and a lot of this inspiration is going to go away. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. What? Um, I noticed the press keeps saying a truck attacked the event. <laughs> uh, we are still kind of trapped in this weird yeah, world. Yeah. They, nobody wants to. The way that I say it is, uh, we know who's doing it. There's a big elephant in the room. He's wearing a turban. He's yelling, "God is great." Mm -hmm. This is an ideology, Wahhabist inspired Sunni Islam. Al Qaeda is the same. Al Nusra is the same. ISIS is the same. Al Shabaab is the same. Mm -hmm. They're all the. All, they're all the same version of radicalized Sunni Islam. Mm -hmm. And it's. I mean, it's you know, it's as plain as the nose of your face. I would think. Yeah, a nose they would like to cut off. That's By right. the way, you slandered elephants by in that in that comment uh jonathan i think you were probably one of the first people to ever kind of it, it, back in the old days of red eye to to talk about the threat of islamism 
What are your thoughts about what happened Thursday? Thanks, Greg. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm horrified because the problem seems to continue to get worse. I mean, this is, what, 15 years after 9-11, and I think Rob's absolutely right. It's the ideas which have not yet been discredited. So the president talks a lot about taking soldiers off the battlefield, but yet this notion of joining Islam and, and joining militant Islam. And, you know, the problem used to be confined to the Middle East. And now we're finding it's not just here at home in the West, but it's the softest of soft targets. It's nightclubs and, and retirement parties parties and just going out and watching a fireworks display. So, you know, until those ideas are discredited, I feel like we're all a target everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you bring up uh, the fireworks uh, uh, club, um, places where there's already noise, rock concerts. Mm -hmm. I happen to think that maybe that's part of it, too, that you hear you, if you hear gunshots, you assume it's firecrackers. If you're at a concert where a band, Eagles of Death Metal are playing, you can't hear the, you can't hear them, and they they've gunned around 20. But those are also instances where you're you're seeing that those sorts of it's the westernized culture it's those ideals that these people are celebrating mm -hmm. which a lot of these militants don't agree with right so it's not only just the opportunity is there for them but they're also trying to then diminish the sort of values that we all share and celebrate you know what's interesting about that that just occurred to me they don't target campuses or colleges uh, which are basically the bastion of, 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 of progressive activi activism and the idea of, uh, of, of the, the accusation of Islamophobia often comes from there. So they attack, the, they attack places where, I don't know, where it's not there. I, I, I wish they were that conscious, and Rob is certainly the, yeah. you know, the ex, uh, expert on this, but you know, Greg, if this follows the same trajectory that we saw in Israel, this ends up with simply knife attacks on the street. Right. The Islam is coming up and just, or, or ramming, you know, as we're talking about, ramming random crowds of people. So I, I wish this was more ideological in terms of targets. I just think it's the West writ large. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jamie? You're, uh, you know, you're a comedian. This is a rough time for a comedian to come on a show. Yeah. You know, I know. I, I do feel like you sat us in the order in which you thought we'd be able to contribute. <laughs> um, Speak for yourself. I have a lot oh. to contribute. Obviously. You were all tied for first. Yeah. Um, I honestly like what what like fright. I, I, I you know, what frightens me about it is exactly what you said is 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 the target. You know, I have three kids, mm -hmm. and it just makes you realize that your regular day can suddenly mm -hmm. become not a regular day anymore, and the threats are out there. And we just go. You go along your day and you get your kids ready for school and you do and you forget that the threats are out there until something like this happens and how how long will it be till it till it happens here no it's true that's and that's the kind of fear they want to instill in us is that it could happen that's exactly what they want to anywhere do. what do you think about uh hillary was on bill o'reilly the other day or actually yeah it was uh yes. thursday night mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. uh saying that it, we have an intelligence problem do you agree is that there's an intelligence problem because we're not always sharing with each other but then sometimes with the intel we're not even telling each other the truth because i want that next promotion so i'm not going to tell my boss the bad news. Right. The truth. Yeah, so that's true. There's definition. We've had it, you know, here with a lot of our uh, federal and state um, law enforcement that they're not sharing it for whatever reason. It's definitely an intelligent, but I mean, okay, but some of the intelligence we need, though, is we need, uh, we need people inside of some of these mosques where they're radicalizing people. We mm -hmm. need to watch the people that are going to prison to radicalize so many of these inmates that come out. Yeah. That, that's the intel you need. You, and know? You, know, you know what kills me is the criticism towards law enforcement for going into mosques undercover as if that's the kind of thing they want to do i can't imagine anything more tedious than listening to people pray uh, f f five times a day i never thought about it that way but absolutely <laughs> yeah and it's, it's, like, it's like we don't want to go there but we're going there to actually protect muslims because muslims yeah. they're more victims they are, of radical muslims they than they're, they're, they are the Biggest victim, and we don't. You know, we're not talking like send a couple guys with the black suits and the sunglasses yeah, yeah. standing in the back. We need some of our Muslim friends to go in there and just kind of say, "These guys are saying this radical stuff. You might need to watch this because we're." Uh they're coming out of here, and a lot of these monsters are similar. They, 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 bring, they bring a lot of these uh, these radical guys out. Greg, isn't that something that's per, you know uh, just permeated this whole quote war on terror? However, is just this fear about offending Muslims? You know, mm -hmm. if we're serious about protecting American self-interest, protecting American lives, we just have to be careful because we're going to offend Muslims. You know, I'm just talking about Dr. Oz, who happens yeah. to be a Muslim, or, or yeah. former Muhammad Ali. I mean, they're yeah. talking about the jihadists, which are so brazen about attacking us, yeah. and yet. We do nothing. Yeah, I'm more worried about getting blown up than I am about offending somebody. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand how more people don't think that way. Because it's getting blown up way worse. I've seen people get blown up. It's offensive. Yeah. yeah it is offensive. <laughs> and, and, but the thing is, it, you, have a high, you have more of a risk 
of being perceived as a bigot yes. than you are being blown up. And so every, every day it's like, if I say something, I, gotta, I can't say Islamism. I've got to say radical Islamism. No, you don't. You just say Islamism. My, my, the other thing that drives me nuts, and this is open to anybody, whenever we talk about our retaliation, which is, in my view, justice, you always get yes. the phrase, we're better than that. Why, why yes. should we be better than that? Well, we're supposed to turn, yeah. Why can't we be, why can't we be worse? Why can't, be, I'm not talking about taking out innocent people, but why can't we be as frightening as they are? Well, people express their sorrow, Greg, as you pointed out, on Twitter, social media, why not express their anger? Right. I mean, isn't that the proper response, justice, as you said? Because expressing anger is just so rude. It's so rude. <laughs> Too many retweets and you get labeled and people don't want that. Yeah, you just have to apologize. Yeah. You know this, Jamie. You I often do. apologize for many things. I do all the time. Yes. Almost after every single thing I say. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's because you're also married. That's true. <laughs> yes, that could be an issue. Joe, I saw you about to open your mouth. Well, yeah, at some point, you know, action. I think you, you did a lovely tweet recently. Mm. I, of course, can't remember it now. Cause, yes, you, you were know. drinking. <laughs> As the night goes. Yes. But, uh, yeah, at some point, this inaction is really... It's a disservice mm -hmm. to not only us, but to our allies and to yeah. our friends. And you can reach out and, and, like you said, hold these candlelight vigils and all of these things. But action is really the only appropriate response mm -hmm. in these cases now. That's all the enemy understands, too, is yeah. action. That's and it. you got to humiliate. You said this to me once at a bar. You said you have to go to you, you, where they, they plan to have the Islamic State. You have to destroy you to, because yeah. it's about humiliating and proving them wrong. It is everything that they do. They know they know which town we're supposed to come into according to their scriptures, which is the Beak in northwestern Syria. They know the capital's Raqqa. Mm -hmm. They know where it's going to be. This is this is the end of times, which they are seriously. That's the, they think we're doing. This is their yeah. uh, this is their uh, it. And um, once we just debunk it. Yeah, maybe it's supposed to be 300 years from now. But yeah. right now, as far as they're concerned, they're doing it. Yeah. It's the discrediting of these ideas. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the knowledge that if you even go to the, one of these websites or pick up a copy of Inspire magazine, there's going to be Homeland Security or FBI agents kicking down your doors with guns drawn. Mm -hmm. But yet, we, you know, we haven't, I think to your point, Rob, once again, we haven't discredited these ideas. Mm -hmm. We're almost seen as sympathetic for them. Oh, it's not everyone. It's just a small subset. Sure. But this is a real brazen enemy uh, well, yeah, uh, that's yeah. 16 years on still affecting the U.S. You know, so... Uh, uh, I mean, I, it's hard to make a joke, but you have to. It's like, imagine picking up Inspire magazine based on the title. It's like, yeah. it sounds like a really up. It's in the self-help <laughs> section. Yeah, it's in the right? self-help <laughs> section. No, yeah, it teaches you how to kill, kill innocent people, and it's called Inspire. <laughs> Why can't they just track down where the magazine is made? That, that's a good question for you. Well, okay, I worked in magazines. We had a pretty, you knew where the magazine was. You know exactly where Runner's World was or Men's Health was. They're, they're doing a pretty good job of staying indoors because we have been hitting with drones all over from Somalia yeah. up to Yemen. Well, even uh, I was reading about a, a guy, Ibrahim Al-Kosi, who's running an indoor Al-Qaeda um, training camp in Yemen. So he knows, it, oh, guess where he lived before there? Where? Uh, Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> yeah, so just let him go because I'm sure he's, he's, totally he's fine yeah. now. What's the big deal? Yeah, exactly. All right, we've got to move on. We've got a lot more to talk about. Um, and uh, coming up, we're going to have more on the terror attack in France with uh, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. On to lighter news. The GOP convention is just days away, and the list of convention speakers is finally being released to the hungry public. On the list, of course, there's all the Trumps. Melania? Melania? I can never get that name right. Uh, Don Jr., of course, Eric, Ivanka, and Tiffany. Tiffany is like the fifth Beatle of Trumps. Uh, delightful, like Pete Best. Four Republican governors are there, Scott, Fallen, Christie, and Walker, which sounds like a really grim law firm. And uh, Trump's GOP primary rivals, which is Cruz, Huckabee, and Carson. All in all, it feels like a celebrity apprentice without the long table. One guy not speaking, Tim Tebow. I know, because he put out this dreamy Instagram video. I wake up this morning to find out that I'm speaking at the Republican National Convention. It's amazing how fast rumors fly, and that's exactly what it is, a rumor. Let's forget about our quarrels and our differences, and let's come together on one nation under God, that you matter, that he loves you as a plan for your life. God bless you, and God bless America. Well, I'm crushed. 
Uh, I'm going to, Kat, because that was such an uplifting message, yeah. and you're such a downlifter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's necessary. Yes. Uh, yeah. What's your take on the convention and the speakers? Well, I can't wait to see what Cruz says, because other people, when they ran against him, they yes. you know, said that he'd be a bad president for this. He straight up said this is a battle between good and evil. <laughs> yes. That's a little bit awkward to call someone evil and then be like, oh, hi. You know? oh, but also, it's like, think about it, Cruz and Trump talking to us. Yeah, you're the guy that said my dad might have killed JFK. Yeah, also a little bit. Uh, yeah, you're dead, you, you accused my dad of being evil. Well, you said I, you said I was evil. I mean, if you saying, you know, I would be very upset if I was running for president. And someone said that it would turn the world evil. Like it might be kind of weird. If yeah, I were president. yeah, but bygones. Let him. Yeah. Let, what's the it's phrase? Gonna, I, I just, let bygones is, be bygones. Yeah, his tone mm -hmm. is going to be very. I, I don't know what it's going to be. I mean, well, I, hope I he don't. Knows. I don't think he's going to say really anything nice about Trump. And I mentioned this on on Red Eye. If you don't have anything nice to say, say it about Hillary Clinton. <laughs> so I think <laughs> that, that's, what, that's really what you're going to see from a lot of these contenders, the people who are up against Trump, who are now there at the convention. They realize that the greatest evil now, in, in, in you know Republicans' eyes, is Hillary Clinton and preventing her from being in the no, White House. No, it's the devil. Wait. <laughs> but why, why do they all donate to the Democrats, though? I mean, Erica, or excuse me, uh, uh, Greg, it seems like the, the, the Trumps are... You call me Erica? <laughs> the Trumps are... <laughs> oh, that's the biggest faux pas. You know that was my previous name before the surgery. <laughs> you were not supposed to bring that up. The, the, you know, the, the Trumps are all speaking at the convention. Uh, uh, Don's, uh, Donald's uh, yeah. kids and all—they've all donated to the Democrats. Yes. They donated yeah, to all, Nancy Pelosi. So, <laughs> they're, they're all cuties, but I mean, is it kind of question their credibility speaking out against Hillary Clinton and the Democrats when they've all donated? That, but that's and the same with Donald. The RNC. And that's the same. Donald donated. What, I, okay, Jamie, I, I'm interested in your take on this convention. Well, I thought Darlene had a great point. <laughs> um, I wanted him to see what it felt like, Greg. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, I, I think it's so interesting, all of, all of the crazy speakers, right? Like, uh, Tim Tebow is not going to be there, but his favorite receiver will be there, the ground. <laughs> and so many. What's I, I'm blanking on the guy's oh, name. I get it. <laughs> the, uh, it was a joke grenade. The, who's the um, the underwear guy model? Uh, Antonio Sabat Sabato. Yeah, Junior. He, he doesn't know how to pronounce it. He's going to be there. <laughs> yes. Which is really cool. I mean, that's how important Trump is. Yeah. That he would take a break from banging women <laughs> to come. <laughs> And speak, you know what I mean. And uh, I, I, is, is it true? I don't know if that's also a, a rumor mm -hmm. that Tebow might get into politics. But if, if he really will, I think it's a horrible idea. I mean, he, you, you saw him passing the game. What if he passes the wrong bill? Yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing. But I'm excited about this, man. A lot of good, uh, a lot of good speakers. Yeah, excellent. All right. Some serious speakers there. Did, uh, yeah, there's this, uh, the, my friend Marcus Luttrell, yeah, lone survivor. Um, yeah, he's just, uh, just a great American. Um, love the guy. Uh, my friend Ryan Zinke is also a Navy SEAL, mm -hmm. uh, SEAL Team 6 guy. He's a congressman from Montana speaking there. Uh, General Flynn will be speaking, a couple other. It, it's, I think it says a lot for which side uh, the military guys are speaking. Because, you know, I spent almost 17 years in the military, and, and we kind of thought one way. It was a whole, maybe I should work hard and earn what I get type <laughs> yeah. attitude, which is weird nowadays and nobody felt sorry for us and it was one of those things it was equal opportunity you have an equal opportunity to show up and if you suck you're out okay. yeah we have a lot in common except for the 17 years of military service <laughs> <laughs> i see i see a lot of me in him yeah, and the whole erica thing yeah and yeah the erica thing which i can't believe you brought up on tv uh it was, it, a, it was a phase Honig. Well, I, you know, I, I know transgenderism is a big idea right now just yeah. throw it out there but it's an it's an eclectic group it's an eclectic but group. But you know who's not on that list? Ew. Sarah Palin. That's true. So I'm wondering if there's going to be some last minute people thrown into the mix. I thought for sure she would have on some like bedazzled she, jacket. She comes down speech. like from one of those suspender things with like the wings coming down. <laughs> yes. She starts screaming. I'm, I'm counting on that. Yeah, no, that'll be fun. All right, don't go away. We have way more interesting stuff to pour into your eye holes like this. Cleveland preps for the convention, but why are campus crybabies afraid to share their space with police? Stay tuned. If you could be in the New York area and would like to be part of our studio audience, email GregTix at FoxNews.com.
You're going to hate this story. The city of Cleveland has spent months preparing for the RNC, including recruiting thousands of additional police officers from other jurisdictions to help maintain order. This apparently was a problem for the delicate snowflakes of Case Western Reserve University. You see, the school had approved the city's request to allow officers from out of town to stay in campus housing for the week. But some students were so afraid of the police that they started a petition demanding the school provide alternative, alternative housing for anyone uncomfortable with increased police presence and that officers should store their weapons off campus. Wrote one I eat, sorry, I meant student. <laughs> I am deeply troubled by the presence, even temporarily, of a militarized police force on the CWRU campus. The number one priority for an educational institution is to guarantee a safe environment for its students, faculty, and staff. I would flip them off right now, but then they have to spend an hour blurring my hand. In response, the school expelled every one of them. I kid, they buckled. Officials decided to essentially shut down for the week. No classes, summer camps, or other activities on campus during the convention. Meanwhile, Professor Splash will hold classes in the quad as usual. <laughs> So that's where I left my singlet. Oh. <laughs> Somewhere. Oh, gee whiz. Honig, were you that dumb as a 19-year-old? Uh, well, I could have gone there, Greg, because that's certainly the way the, the, uh, that higher education has gone. Yeah. You know, what's so frustrating is that these kids, these crazy college kids, grew up to work in the White House, mm -hmm. to advise politicians, to advise world leaders. And I think you could, it's not too difficult to say that so much of what's wrong in America today, in my opinion, started in higher learning. It started in the educational system in the 50s and 60s and Absolutely. 70s when progressive, progressivism finally hit higher yeah. ed. Well, it started in the 60s. It transformed itself into uh, identity politics, which is now becoming uh, 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 pure, unadulterated tribalism. Yep. Everybody is. Everybody. It's a balkanized country we live in because that's the way you that's undermine that of, patriotism. That was part of this too. I saw one of the petitioners wrote that he was upset because this contributes to the creation and maintenance of a gendered space. I mean, mm -hmm. what in fresh hell are you talking about, kids? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, do you even know what you're talking about? I don't think they do. I just think they see these hashtags they're like, oh, police. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're upset, and we use the words like gendered and racialized and microaggressions last. Well, Throw some of those in there, and now I'm real mad. Yeah. Come on, man, learn something. Like, oh, read a so book. many people just need a punch in the face. Totally. <laughs> now, we don't endorse that. We don't endorse the punch in the face here. But I will say this: this must be interesting to you because you have people on campus talking about an unsafe space. You have been in some unsafe spaces. Right. right. Yeah. Shouldn't you just do like a little kind of event with your SEAL buddies and just pick one of them up and go? We're going to go to some really unsafe spaces. <laughs> That's true. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know where we are in this country where the safest place you can be yeah. is surrounded by police with guns. Yeah. Like, even look at the Secret yeah. Service. Pretty sure they're carrying guns everywhere. Yeah. Capitol Police are carrying guns everywhere. It's like, this is so bizarre that the cops have become the bad guys. We're in a place where we can say you can't base all from one religion based on the act of a few, but you can say all cops are bad because one cop screwed exactly. up. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. Cops, you can the generalize with people, people you don't like. Yeah, that's it. That's you it. Know? And yeah. Greg, it's, it's emotions first and reason second. Exactly. So just go with your emotions, whatever they, however you feel, that's the truth for the moment. And mm -hmm. reason, reality gets pushed to the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the back of the bus, Jamie, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Uh, what do you make of these crybabies? It's, this story is, is, is so annoying, right? Mm -hmm. It's just it's it's so infuriating, and I did find myself in a, in a lot of unsafe spaces before I was married. But <laughs> I really I really heard this story, and I was I was so annoyed that it, it really does seem like I, I is it possible because they canceled classes that some of the kids I could see myself signing a petition without reading it, mm -hmm. knowing the class.
boxes would be canceled. Right. right. I thought of that, like, is it, could, it, could maybe that be it? And then I was thinking, who is afraid to stay in a place where everyone in their rooms are armed. Yeah. I do this, I stay at Motel 6's all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> cry babies. It, it, this story is frustrating. It's, it's very frustrating. It's there, there, it, it is the wussification of America. I yeah. think I just coined that, Joanne. I think you did. But yes. You ever notice how violent they get when you disagree with them? Yeah, exactly. that's true. It's like yeah. everyone's tolerant until you disagree with them. Yeah. We, we will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without guns, of course. Exactly. <laughs> Kindness. Yeah. <laughs> I typically prefer my Case Western Reserve chilled. Because, <laughs> you know, it sounds like a drink. But this is just cold. Yes. This is frigid. But honestly, the police, I think, are better off. Mm -hmm. They really are, because after hard days of keeping the public safe, there are going to be lots of crowds, a lot to look out for. For them to come home and they want to go to sleep, they don't have to deal with these whiny, pissy, yeah. you know, self-righteous <laughs> students. Like, good for them that it's all shut down, because, you know, they'll actually be able to recharge. You know, if they're on campus, they should have, like, a theme party, a cop party, where they're all dressed as cops. <laughs> <laughs> and, just, just, and just see if anybody's offended. No, well, no, we actually are cops. <laughs> you know, we are cops. So we can dress like this. So they all just walk around and have, like, their little red cups. You know what they, this is where, this is where I believe there needs to be a database. I mean, I'm a, I, I, this is where I'm no longer a libertarian, if you have noticed. I've been changing. Um, in the future, when any of these people call the police, the police will pop, show up. But when they're helping these people out, the, the cops are allowed to mock them. Oh, I remember you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what's so frustrating about the progressives. You can easy, just as easily call them regressives. Yes. Uh, uh, because, you know, they're the first ones to call out for help from the police, whether it's Occupy Wall Street right. or students in all these situations. As soon as they need the cops, they're the first one to, to, to call out for their help because, of course, they provide an important service. They don't get the respect they deserve. Yeah. And they'll call the police if their dealer, like, sold them oregano. <laughs> <laughs> they will because they're that dumb. Do you think it's weird, too, they don't get to stay in hotels? That it's like when I was in a dorm, it was like eight of us with like one bathroom. Yeah. Is it gonna be just giant men in bunk beds? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds like a movie I saw in Germany. Uh, or maybe it was made in Germany and I saw it in Mexico. <laughs> Either way, it was about 10 years ago and a lot of it didn't make sense. <laughs>
uh, when I could just make fun of the per other person. <laughs> so are you vo you're voting for Hillary too? No, no, no. I'm, can you believe I'm, the best we can do is the devil we know and the devil we don't know? Yeah, exactly. That's the best we can do. Yeah, it is. Who do you, who do you like? Are you interested? Are you following this at all, Jamie? As of, as of uh, about a half hour ago, <laughs> yeah. um, I've been really into it. I, do, I, don't, I don't even know. I'm going to decide based on what happens here in the next few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone kind of scares me. That, but that was a great point. I did, I, Trump kind of scares me. But I'll be honest with you, when, when the chips are down and, and a tragedy happens, that's when I like what he has to say. Exactly. Because it's action. That, that's the thing. It's like, it's like at least he's got, he's got one thing. Terror, terror, Rob. He's got one thing he's not afraid to say, and it's what we've been saying, which is like Islamism. There's yeah, a problem. That's what's gotten him in trouble. Is uh, yeah. he says stuff that comes off as a way that people find offensive. Like when they they call Trump a racist, he's not a racist. He said stuff that people you can't say on, or you shouldn't say on TV sometimes. Yeah. And they label him and it sticks. Uh, but I mean, as far as I can, t now, Hillary Clinton, she does know what's going on overseas. She does have a grasp on it. She, you know, a lot of my Navy SEAL friends would say she totally dropped the ball in Benghazi, which right. she did. Um, but she does know stuff that's going on. But I guarantee you, that ISIS is more afraid of Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's what I have. Joe, thoughts? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that when people are on the fence, which, you know, in these swing states, you know, they're still trying to decide what they want to do. And Swingers love fences. They do. They love going back and forth. Uh, but if you're going to, you know, get off the fence and onto someone's turf, would you rather be the man who's at least honest, maybe about his devilish ways? You know, he's just very forthright about everything. Mm -hmm. Or do you want someone who... It, is known to be a liar. I mean, we did just have Comey's, you know, results come out from that FBI invest criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. And I think that right now we want a man who's honest and the, the only offense we we want is PC and not someone who's actually lying to us. But just quickly, what was Trump's reaction over the Garland cartoon attack? Yeah, you're right. You're right. To blame the cartoonist That's for true. offending him. And, you know, Donald Trump wants to make a deal with Iran. So I, I wish he his actions echoed the tough talk that he says during his campaign. We don't know, but we don't know if Hillary actually is going to do any of the things she's saying she's going to do or sure. not. She just makes it up as she goes along. People know that. That's why Bernie was so popular, because he's at least been consistent. And people, I think, isn't it funny, though, how supporters, they, like, still think he can be president? <laughs> Even though he quit and he endorsed her, there's going to be people being like, Bernie 2016 forever. And we're going to be like, it's 20. 18, they're gonna be like, yeah. I didn't know, man. I didn't have time. I have to go to work. So. Yeah, I slept through it. But basically, Hillary Clinton is now a Bernie Sanders hologram, right? She's, yeah. she's doing she's doing Sanders kabuki. But will that last beyond the election, or is she just trying to get these voters? I, I don't know. Yeah, she may end up moving. Well, it's, it's, almost, her. it's almost depressing too. With uh, the you know the FBI said they're not gonna bring up charges. The Clinton camp is happy. Oh, look at us. We didn't break the law. We're just really, really incompetent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's all. yeah when your yeah. best defense, when you're having to tell people, I'm really stupid as a campaign strategy, you know things are going well. Last word. Uh, but yeah, and, and that's what the scare, even like with Clinton's response to France was saying, like, we have to change like policy and intel. And that's all makes perfect sense to me. But it does seem like something that's not going to happen right away. And I feel like if there's intel, mm -hmm. it, it, maybe we should not email it to Hillary. Maybe we should just use oral <laughs> legends. Yeah. Because yeah. um, in Think about how expensive it would be if Hillary's president. We have to have secret service protection and can't keep a secret service protection. <laughs> That's Mr. Lissau. <laughs> Should be a star, but he's living in Alaska. <laughs> the career moves he makes is beyond me. I guess it's for love. Up next, final thoughts back in 240 seconds. <laughs> Got about a minute and a half for final thoughts. Rob? ISIS are afraid of going to hell. If they get killed by a woman, they automatically go to hell. So I say lock and load, ladies. Ah, nice. <laughs> National Convention, I think that Ivanka Trump is going to be Trump's best asset. Mm -hmm. uh, she will hopefully speak every single day when there. If he wants the female vote and the youth vote, she really needs to be present for the rest of his campaign. Mm. Onig. Yeah.
Uh, Greg, quick apology. Years ago, Greg invited me to a, a, a red eye party. I pre partied before the party and ended up making a terrible joke at your expense the minute you walked up. So I'm sorry about that. And uh, it, it was regard to him physically. I'm not going to go elaborate on that. But I'm so sorry and thank you for having me on your, your stuff. I don't remember wow. that. Now, it's gonna, now you got to tell me after the show. <laughs> if anybody wants to see me being funny, I do have a TV show on Netflix with uh, Rob Schneider. I don't want people to think all I do is stuff with Rob Schneider. If you want to see some stuff I do only on my own, you can check out my website, robschneidersfriend.com. <laughs> <laughs> You really should only microwave the microwave oatmeal for 90 seconds. Because I messed it up this morning, but I still ate it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, that's... Uh, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah, it's really bad. You lead a tough life. It's really hard. <laughs> I know. It is, it's hard being you. And it's hard being around you. <laughs> yeah. I at least spend most of my time alone, because I'm a philanthropist like that. All right. I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, thanks to Rob O'Neill, as always, and your service, my friend. So welcome back. Another week, another horrible terror attack. It seems to happen on every day that ends in Y. I want to bring in Dr. Sebastian Gorka. He's the Distinguished Chair of Military Theory at Marine Corps University and author of the great book I have with me right now, Defeating Jihad, The Winnable War. That's it. All right, uh, Dr. Gorka, just your thoughts off the, off the bat. Uh, off the bat, uh, the continent of Europe is at war, as is the whole of Western civilization. Look at what has just happened. If you average it out, in the last year and a half, France has had two, uh, has had a jihadi attack every two months. Look at the list. It's hard to remember. We've got Paris twice. Brussels, we've got Istanbul, we've got San Bernardino, we've got Orlando. It, the ISIS brand is more dangerous than Al Qaeda ever was, Greg. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, everybody's, well, some people in the White House are saying this is a measure of success. As we eradicate them in, in uh, Syria, these are just acts of desperation. Do you buy that? Yeah, yeah, that, that is the proof yet again that the political elite in the White House live in an Alice in Wonderland fantasy world. Tell that to the relatives of the 49 dead in Orlando mm -hmm. or the 80 plus killed. Tell that to the American father and little child's family who were killed in Nice yesterday. For me, that's not a sign of de desperation. This war isn't just about territory in Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. It's about can you exit your house in the morning in America America safely or not, Greg? Yeah. You know, I, when, uh, la, la, on Thursday when I was watching this unfold, I always I feel as though Earth has this collective shrug. It's like, oh, here we go again. Almost as though terror is now such a fact of life, it's practically decriminalized. It's as though, yeah, you know, that's that's what they do, and then we don't follow through. But but you know why that is, Greg? It's because of the political elite again, because they don't say this is a war. They refuse to use words like enemy or evil. And when you don't talk about the fact this is the incarnation of evil, then people will say, oh, yeah, another attack. It's the responsibility of our leaders that we are in the catastrophic situation we're in right now. All right. You know, your book, uh, uh, Defeating Jihad, and you, in the subhead is The Winnable War. Uh, if you were suddenly made president, uh, how would you win the war? Well, uh, they'd have to change the constitution first because, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've, got, I've got a funny accent. Um, <laughs> but, 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 but the fact is three things, very simple. Number one, what we've just been talking about, get politics out of the threat assessment. Mm -hmm. No more political correctness, no more attorney general censorship, censorship of the 911 dispatch call from Orlando. Number two, 
You know, we don't need to be the face of this war. We shouldn't be. It should be our Sunni allies, the Jordanians, the Egyptians, the people that the president has dissed for the last seven and a half years. Mm -hmm. They have to be the war, but we have to help them. And lastly, a little lesson from the Cold War. The final victory here will be when we delegitimize the ideology of the enemy. We have to make jihad unsexy. So a giant <laughs> counter-propaganda campaign using, Greg, a lot of humor as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm trying. I want to ask you, though, about something that I noticed a after the attack. Um, they, people were very careful not to show the video of the carnage. However, in certain other acts of brutality, let's say with the police, uh, there never seems to be much resistance to showing that kind of activity. Uh, that's, that's okay. Shouldn't we be showing the graphic yeah. results of ISIS and of Al-Qaeda and of Islamism because they're getting a pass every time we don't show it, right? Huge issue. I'm so glad you mentioned this. We have a real issue here in America, and it started on 9-11. We have self-censorship. How many of the real images of 9-11 did, did we see? The man falling was about it. Mm -hmm. We pixelated out the dead Americans on the floor of that rock concert in Paris. We need, we need to see the reality. When you watch the videos, as I do, in their full unedited versions coming out of ISIS, and you see a man take seven seven minutes to sever another human being's head from their shoulders, then you get the stakes. Then you understand how committed our enemy is, and they will never give up until we crush them, Greg. Mm -hmm. I agree, and I, 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 I do think there is just a sense that maybe in 2016, a large portion of the population can't take it. They just can't take it. They can't bear, they can't bear the truth. If they look at that, then they have to they, they have to realize it's more than just saying thoughts and prayers on Twitter. You actually have right. to support the battle in the battlefield and be and, and, and believe that you must eradicate evil at its core. But nobody people are scared of saying that, I guess. Dr. Gorka, great having you here. And your book is fantastic. And I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Greg. Anytime. Thank you. All right, we're going to take another break. Coming up, the list of convention speakers is out. Who will make the most of the big stage? That's next. Yeah.